Many people do a good job of reporting Mandela effects, but why do they even bother doing it? Why doesn't everyone just go, eh, seen it, know it, that's enough? It's because of at least two things. One is inspiration. That is a compelling of the spirit and anything a part of the Lord's plan is going to be inspired in a way that is irresistible. Secondly, because community is important. Nobody wants to be an island unless they have been driven to that point through maddening unkindness and no longer want to trust anyone. Can't trust anyone, even awake Christians. But in general, seeing more or seeing something that triggers that feeling of, whoa, just does that thing inside where you need to point it out to share the experience. There is something valuable for others to know you want them to know. The same has been the case for Brant and I. We have wanted to point out what we have seen for your benefit, so you know, to share it in a community spirit. Lay extra pieces of the puzzle out so you can use them yourself. The last video, we pointed out the campaign connection to the new ME relating to if you're not with us, you're against us quote. We're trying to show you how Brent and I have an experience in our life and next thing, someone reports a Mandela effect connecting to it, making us go, whoa. Both of us can see it clearly, so we go, whoa, together. We have pointed it out a lot to Lydia and she is very awake to it all. When three people are awake to something and many others who you think would be awake are fast asleep, you tend to have those conversations of, wow, how can they not see it? You shake your head and you just wonder, how can they not see it even when you point it out to them? But they just don't. Or if they get a glance at it, they are not affected by it. I'm sure you're very familiar with those conversations yourself where you say, how do they not remember it was Luke, I am your father? Or they think, yeah, it might have been that, but they aren't moved by it and just get on with their life. Also, remember your own thoughts triggered by those people's reactions of that nature. Especially those thoughts where you say, well, I'm glad I can see that reality is changing. I'd not like to be like that person, asleep, complacent, and oblivious to what is really happening. Pick up what I'm putting down when I say that. Brant and I are glad we see things that you are oblivious to. But we, in our care for you, keep trying to change you being oblivious to it. Maybe there's a good reason for that. So in our last video, we pointed to the fact Brant recently released a video on the word campaign and was asking everyone to work together. And then suddenly an ME occurred linked to a campaign with a united tone to it that new ME of you're either with us or against us. What happened when we showed you that point in our last video? If you happened to see it, what did you do? I'm sure some rolled their eyes. That's predictable. I have some family members that roll their eyes when I tell them a new big Mandela effect has occurred. They are not affected, so they don't know what the effect is or why it would matter that reality is changing. But all of us who see that know its truth and we know that a reality change matters. We know that a scripture changing matters and we all live from that place specifically because we know that it matters. So Brant and I also know that it matters that a lot of Mandela effects happen in line with what is happening in our personal lives, things we say or do or what other people say to us. We would not bother sharing it if it didn't matter. This is not about us, it is about the big picture. But are you affected by what we share, even if you do get a glance at it? No, we have no evidence that you are affected by it. Because you don't want to believe we are who we say, and you have very specific beliefs on what those two will be doing. You have not transferred that nothing is going to play out how we thought in these last days to that particular subject. But if you did transfer that wise understanding, you should have gained from the Mandela effect. And you saw all of these Mandela effects following our life experiences. It might just affect you. You might gain some more clarity of the Lord's plan and exactly where we are on the prophetic clock. But right now you are not affected by it. So that leaves Brant and I living a very unique, lonely, painful life by you not seeing it, caring to see it or being affected by it. You know that separated feeling from those who don't see something or want to see. It's as real for this as it is for the Mandela effect. Brant and I are very affected by it. And if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. 
And if you don't all want to see it, there's no other group that has any hope of wanting to see it. So that leaves us on our own. But in the last video, we didn't show you all of the proof this Mandela effect is linked to us, but rather gave you a taste in that word campaign as a link. That gave you time to have a reaction you can now reflect back on. When we showed you the connection to campaign, did you roll your eyes and think these two are crazy and they read too much into things? Or did you go, hmm, that's interesting. I'm a truth seeker, so maybe I might like to know more to give myself enough information to evaluate truth from. Think back, which one of those two people were you? Let me show you some further proof now. The wonderful thing about this proof is that we have five witnesses to it. Ten days or so ago, I sent an email to these five people, Lydia, Ernie, Jane, Nina and EYA. Brent was also included and so replied in this thread, in response to their relentless sabotaging of us and our channel, to which they have done great damage, hurt us in unimaginable ways and just ignore it all, including our pleas for them to stop, Brant wrote this to them. Congratulations on your big campaign win against us. See those words campaign combined with against us. And see how... Just after this experience, a Mandela effect is reported with the words against us in them. And it's connected to a campaign. Click, click. The evidence is right here in front of you. We are showing you. We are pointing at it and we are showing you. It's so well documented that it cannot be imagined away. If in your aversion to us created by lies and gossip, you are not affected by that truth staring at you in the face, it doesn't mean it shouldn't affect you. It just means you're much like the people who are not affected by a Mandela effect they see. We understand this might very well be called a coincidence if it was a single event, but this just keeps happening over and over again. Lydia has seen enough of it to know that is true. I quite often show her how we just said something and there is a few days later an effect to match it. It's just one of the reasons she is unwavering in her conviction for us. She also understands kindness and loyalty and friendship better than most do. When you know more, you are convicted and you just grit your teeth and wait for others who don't know more to wake up. People seeing less will never convince people seeing more that they are the ones who are right. It's just the way it is. It's more a case of first wake up, catch up and then let's talk again. So we have been patiently waiting with gritted teeth for you to wake up so you can catch up so we can talk. It seems we can't force you awake. You need to want to wake up yourselves. So this strong, reliable pattern of our life experience followed by a Mandela effect is something we cannot escape. It is about Mandela effects. You are the Mandela effect community. We don't tell you who else is there to tell. Nobody. So we are telling you. I also recently shared another one where Washington Jackson, aka Website 2020, aka Making Space, who has a campaign of pain against us as well, accused me of not having a metaphorical earpiece in my ear where I can hear Jesus speaking to me, as I claimed. And immediately after that, Britney Spears lost her earpiece and microphone in Whoops, I Did It Again. Like immediately. And that was a big effect that impacted a lot of people. It blew up in the researcher's Facebook group. I shared with you all in a previous video how the Lord told me hungry eyes would change. And then after publicly saying that, maybe it's Mandela reported a change a few weeks after in that song. I also spoke about the song Don't Speak by No Doubt in that video as well. And predictably, a reported change followed in that song as well. I expressed in those videos how the Mandela effects, the letters I received, they all tie into a little scroll from Revelations 10. I was specifically pointing to the Mandela effects related to sweet and bitter. Then maybe it's Mandela again comes right out with a new ME on the band Bitter Sweet Symphony. The two words combined. Could it be any more accurate in those specifics? How can you not see this? I want to shake you so you can see it. I can't even go to a new doctor who has the name Paula and not see a Mandela effect reported about a Paula on the very same day of my appointment as I'm travelling there. That is how far it goes with Mandela effects following my life and Brand's life and our life together. That is far from a coincidence. Surely you know that is far from a coincidence. Some of them only the two of us could ever know, but 
Enough has been chronologically documented on videos and with others from this community involved for you to see the truth that something is going on. There is something to it. Don't you want to be affected by truth? Can't you with some empathy put yourselves in our shoes and realize that if this was happening to you, you would want to share it and you'd want to see some people being affected by it, some discussion amongst yourselves about it in a positive light of at least some fascination. Brett and I, we live a very strange life. If it is not for your benefit, we may as well check out of this life because it's so painful to the nth degree to live life this way when nobody cares about it. You are so blind that you can't even see our hearts. <sighs> I really want you to ask yourselves these questions. Ask yourselves and think about it with some honesty. Why is Brant and I, the two who love you all so much, we have fought so hard against literal villains in our lives to be here? I have never fought so hard for anything in my life. Why am I the loudest voice for love? I declare my big love for you all and yet I am treated in the most unloving of ways in return by this awake Christian community. I have poured my broken heart out, sharing that I desperately wanted to end my life for a very long time because I hurt so much by what Jane, Ernie, Nina and EYA did to me. Not to even get an ounce of compassion. In case you are not aware, wanting to end your own life is like as far as pain can go. Cyberbullying, making a person feel that way, is as extreme as cyberbullying can go. And that is what they have been doing to us. Cyberbullying us in a way that has terrorised us. They can't even see that they are doing it. In fact, they even pat each other on the back for doing it. But with all of that happening, all of you, a full community, many, many people have been inspired to stay silent. That wouldn't even happen in the world with a cyberbullying situation. Why is it that Brent and I are the ones that are always calling for us to unite and work together and yet we are the ones that are exiled? Why was it us that was betrayed by our best friend here just as Jesus was betrayed by Judas? It hurts to be betrayed and even more when it's your best friend. Why have we been shamed, mocked, ridiculed, hurt beyond humane levels by people here who are supposed to operate in Christ-like love? Why was it us that was lied about publicly and yet a truth community does not even care, let alone ask for it to be fixed? Not only has it not been fixed, we have had excuses thrown at us for why it's justified that it hasn't been. When you have an elder who is making excuses for a person who has committed one of the Ten Commandments sins, you know something's up. Something's going on. There is a spiritual blindness. There is foul play. Why is it our channel that has been the one that was sabotaged all the way along, making it one of the smallest channels in the community, despite the fact that it has more answers with undeniable factual evidence about Mandela effects in one video than some big channels have in all of their videos combined? Why is it that when people turn on us, they flip instantly? They won't let us explain anything. Why is it that you are all told something I supposedly think for two and a half years when I have screamed, I don't think that. I never did. I even made a public announcement recently thinking, surely that'll squash the fantasy some have that I want to be a queen. But no, that would be too easy. Washington Jackson was back to Lydia the following day in writing explaining why I do want to be a queen. It is an obsessive fantasy fueled by a spiritual attack from the enemy if it goes that far beyond maturity. Washington even used in his argument that how dare I be this way because even the elders threw their crowns before the throne in Revelations. My public announcement included the statement I would throw my crown away for just all of you, let alone Jesus. Jesus is a lot kinder to me than this community is. Why would I not do that for him? For him to not put that together is spiritual blindness. Why is it us that is ignored like fresh air when we reach out to communicate to resolve an issue in love and maturity? 
in this email that Brant responded to, to Ernie, Jane, Nina and EYA. Don't worry, this community will never have to hear from me again. Consider me dead. What an awful thing for someone who is Mandela affected to have to say as he exits the door, which he has no choice in because people sabotage him at every corner. And what was their response? Oh, it wasn't, no, 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 Brent. We don't want it to go that far. We don't want you to hurt that much. No, it was utter silence yet again. So in other words, they do want him to suffer that much. How nice. What beautiful hearts they have. Why are we the ones who hurt this bad and yet are still the ones relentless in trying to reach you with what we know? Why do we not care about our reputation or, in fact, even our dignity to do that? Put all the pieces together. Hurry up. Put all of the pieces together. My goodness, you are smarter than this. Add the name Branch to that. Add an impossible gift that I have to that mix. Add Brant's teleporting to that. Add a vision I have had from Jesus showing how all the Mandela effects have patterns that were proven to be real and just so happen to be following Revelations verse by verse. Add the stones and rocks we have been throwing at you to get your attention. Add it up from an anything is possible, things are not going to play out how we expected mindset and you will see what it adds up to. If it is part of the Lord's plan... Why would you not want to see it? Maybe add my level of frustration to it as well. We have far more evidence we are the two witnesses than any of you have combined that we are not. And unlike you, we have to sit in it, aware of it every second of every day, because it is our lives. We don't have the luxury you have of shutting down this video and getting on with something different. If all of you could only live one day in our shoes, you would be begging to return to your much easier life might not like us in our wicked nerve to put all of our monumental, painful and unique, bizarre experiences together and be honest in what we see and know, but that won't make one scrap of difference to Jesus in his decision to use us if that's what he wants. You ought to at least know that about him by now. He does not ask for your opinion. He has the wisdom to see ahead and know if you are all people who will act the opposite to how we act and we still care about you anyway that we are going to get a job done that needs to be done no matter what the conditions are. Three years Brent and I have been working together now. Three. Three. Documenting every little thing that we see. Three. In September it was three years. Reality is changing. The reality changes all spell out that as a community we have literally been living the book of Revelations. Two from among you have been abused and left for dead. But those two have answers because they see more and they have been working together for three years. Are you just asleep or are you blind? Whether or not you wake up in time will be the answer to that.